You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. is joining us via Skype tonight on the show. What's happening, DC? Yo, what's going on, man? We are here to talk some Pelicans, my man. We are to talk Pelicans. They took on the Miami Heat in the blender and came up with a nice victory, 124 to 123 in overtime. They were able to get it. Uh, Drew Holiday slick float in the lane helped seal the deal for the Pelicans. We'll recap that tonight as well. So, uh, without further ado, let's give our uh, fans and the, all the fan family we have out there in sports coma land throughout the nation a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for yeah. your donations. Thank you for sharing and helping the show. Bless you. Thank you for all that Definitely you do. Definitely appreciate it. And uh, tonight's show, we'll bring it to you. We'll be covering the Miami, the Miami Heat versus New Orleans Pelicans game with stats facts and breakdowns and we also have interviews from uh, coach l gentry anthony davis and ian clark a chime in with their thoughts post game it's the clock we'll also talk about the pelicans four game winning streak that's right four game winning streak we'll cover that and talk about what's going on with that also the dominance of one the broad one anthony davis as he continues to turn up his play in a major fashion, showing out big for the Pelicans, dumping a 45.17 rebound game Ooh. on the Miami Heat, turning the Heat off, wait, man. Wait, hold up, wait, wait. You got to throw in the five blocks. Five and blocks five and five blocks. steals. Steel? Yes. Wow. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. 41 wow. minutes, man. Wow. That's one word to describe his performance. Also, we're going to – that's one thing we'll delve into. We'll also talk – He's been done in the last 20 or 30 years what he did, man. Man, the dude continue to break old history, old historic records, man, like it's nothing. A man on a whole nother level, bro. Bottom line. We're going to – some more – we're going to get into that later, but yeah, we're going to – here's some more uh, uh, topics on our rundown. We're going to talk about Lemon Fresh. That's right. Uh, Walter Lemon Jr., made his appearance and even I'm even more surprised <laughs> by the fact that Elvin Gentry played the man, you know, after they signed him. He usually benched them guys. I'm pretty sure that's why Mike James got the hell out of here. Cause he rolled the pine all the way until his 10 day uh contract was up. I was like, what the hell Gentry doing? But anyway, we're gonna get into that topic. We're gonna talk it, more about it. Lemon 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 look like he was gonna get a little bitter behind that. So I just <laughs> said, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and put him in. <laughs> <laughs> Also, we're going to talk about Okafor. That's right. Okafor is solid as a rock on defense, man. We'll talk about Okafor's defense. And the fact, since he's been starting, the Pelicans uh, are undefeated since as Okafor a tree, has been in there. That's right. <laughs> Okafor. <laughs> and we're going to talk yeah. about Drew Holiday, too. Drew Holiday missed the, play, missed the All-Star break. Nobody talk about uh, Drew Holiday. Maybe he was a little peeved. I, I, we'll you never know. know. I remember this one dude before the season started. Before we even worry about that guy, because I know that guy's kind of crazy. Drew Holiday average like 18 <laughs> points a game, about six, seven assists, and he was going to be an all-star candidate. That dude must work for Fox or ESPN or something, man. I, I don't I don't know who that is, bro. Well, he might need to. They might need to hire that little brother. I think he know what he'd be talking Drew Holiday playing at an all-star level right now, of course. Uh, he is playing pretty well. And I think a lot of that could be attributed to his new attitude as he's really stepping it up defensively and offensively quite equally. And he's brought out the new. He's brought back the crisscross haircut, and I think that will definitely help. <laughs> and that's the Travis Scott now, man. He he channeling his inner Travis Scott. Drew Holiday, will make you jump, jump. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Anyways, he was jumping out the gym yesterday. He, he, Keep the he head, is. Drew. 
Drew is doing what he's doing, man. He's going to put up two choices and nine assists with a keep it, baby. Man, keep it going, Drew. Whatever you're doing, keep drawing what you're drawing. Uh, let's look at the L Gentry been doing his thing too, man. Big ups to Coach L Gentry, the sleepy-eyed one. <laughs> As he continue to do what he's been doing, man, playing the bench. You know, we, we, we like to say if he'd have done that, man, early in the season, we still would have DeMarcus Cousins and we'll have a more developed bench, but we're not going to dwell on that. The fact that L Gentry is playing his bench more and relying on, on the <laughs> bench. It's big, a good look for L, L Gentry, big ups, and showing that the old man can adjust and he's not one of them old coaches that just won't stick to the same damn thing what? until you run the plane into the mountain. So I don't know. Maybe he's not a fish-eyed fool. <laughs> you know? Maybe, maybe he's not, man. <laughs> Gentry got some fat on top of that head, man. He's oh, using that man, that's cool, brain, man. bro. That's cool, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> But then we'll ask the you question. We, this. Know, we, 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 got, we, we also <laughs> we also go talk about the topic. Should the, the Pelicans reinforce the bench just in case uh, have an extra body there? And then that we'll couple that topic with the fact that solo Solomon Hill is due to be due to return real soon. And we'll break that down, talk more about that. And then if that's not all that if you don't got your, your belly full off those topics, we'll preview the upcoming Milwaukee Bucks game Sunday at two o'clock. We'll cover that and preview that game with stats and breakdown, and we'll give you our predictions on the game as well. All that today on episode 151. That means, that's right, Pelican Post Game Report, episode 151. So let's get right into 151. Uh, DC, we just, like we said, we went over a lot of topics, man. Pelican's able to get it done, major fashion, big way, against a tough heat club. Now, this ain't no stroll of the mill heat club. They 30, and of course, at the time, they were 30 and 28 coming into the game, 16 and 17 on the road. But this Heat is a well-coached team with Eric Spolstra. They got D-Wade back, a veteran. They were all, we're already a good, nice young team with Hassan Whiteside and uh, a couple other guys. They all missing a few guys like Deion Waiters. I think he's out. But Goran Dragic coming off all-star uh, appearance, he is a he is for real. And this team was a good matchup. They came in wearing the Miami uh, Vice colors. Uh, the, the pink and the powder blue uh, coming in. in the Pelicans, man, I mean, they matched them. They played well. It was an exciting game. Even went down to the wire. Ultimately, the Pelicans end up winning in overtime. They did just a little bit more uh, than what the Miami Heat could do. The Pelicans uh, kept the turnovers, you know, down like the – well, down 15 turnovers, 17 points off those turnovers. They also – uh, at where what and what rebound wise 65 to 66 Pelicans shot 44 percent from the field they were 26 percent from downtown but they did hit 83 percent of their free throws 20 of 24 uh dc before we give coach l gentry's thoughts on the game what are your thoughts on the game man i thought it was a phenomenal effort um by all the players man everybody put in a lot of energy, you know what I'm saying? They didn't always do good defensively. I mean, we gave Miami, I think, 70-something uh, paint points, and they like one of the lowest-scoring teams in the paint in the league, one of the lowest-scoring teams, period. So I don't think we did good technically sound on the defensive end, but we made up with it with our offense and our, uh, our effort and intensity even on the defensive end. We got a lot of turnovers and a lot of fast break points, and I think that was the key to getting us that victory. That's right. That's good insight, man. And let's hear what old L. Gentry got to say about no, it. No, um, I thought we – I mean, I thought both teams played extremely hard, you know, and they're a hard team to play, you know, especially coming out of the break because they probably play as hard as any team in the league. And, uh, you know, they've got a big guy that does a great job of protecting the basket, and uh, uh, and then they have, you know, guards, especially Goring, who – you know, I think he proved tonight uh, that there's a reason that he made the all-star team. But I just thought we hung in and hung in. And, uh, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't think we really got a, ever, ever got a rhythm going like, like I think we're capable of. But I thought uh, this was probably our best game as far as, like, grinding it out and just hanging in and finding a way to win. Coach, did you talk to your guys about let's lean on Holiday and Davis and their actions together, or did they kind of figure it out on their own? No, I mean, we, we, we have a play that we run where we try to create an empty side, and I think Drew is very good at getting to the basket. AD is very good at spacing it out, and, uh, you know, we had a lot of success with it, so we just kind of stayed with it. The last sequence there with no timeouts and, and I mean, just talk about 
what happened there and just Drew's ability to, to finish that off? Well, the thing that we talked to Drew about is that, uh, you know, first two or three times he went right to AD and we knew or really felt like that they were going to leave a little bit early this time in order to be able to rotate to him. So uh, we told him, even the last one that he threw to him, we thought that he maybe should have taken that shot. And so we told him that if they leave early, you just got to hold it for one more second and you're probably going to be the guy that's open. And Drew did a great job of reading the situation and just making the shot. Coach, can you talk about the first half when Miami was getting into the lane relatively easily and then all of a sudden Emeka and some of the other guys started defending the paint really hard. I mean, you had 13 blocks tonight, a season high. What changed to stop them from getting into the paint? So uh, they're just an attack team in the paint, you know. Uh, you know, we did a pretty good job the second half, but they still ended up with 70 points in the paint. That's a lot. But, you know, they're always in the attack mode. And then, you know, you got Whiteside and those guys that are very good offensive rebounder and James Johnson and those guys. So uh, we just kept trying to battle. Uh, I thought Omeka did a great job of, uh, you know, blocking some of the shots that they, uh, that they bought his way. But, you know, they don't really care. They continue to attack the rim, attack the rim. I think that's how you end up with 13 block shots. But, you know, they're, they're relentless as far as attacking the rim, and you just got to be able to protect it. And that's where I think Omeka has done a great job for us the short time that he's been here. Is there a way to describe what AD is doing in the last four No, years? I tell you, I, I thought he had had a pretty good game, and then I, I'd never know how many points anybody had. But I looked at the stat sheet when we were walking in. I, I, I couldn't believe he had 45 That's Coach L. Gentry, man, but, shining some light uh, on the game uh, that's with his really insight as usual. Thing, Looking at some of the, the statistics from this game, uh, D.C., and the Davis, 45 points, 17 rebounds, five blocks, five steals. I mean, excuse me, five blocks, five, uh, yes, five steals. Drew 41 minutes, 17 to 34, 10 of 11 from the free throw line. And there are other players that played in the game as well. But Drew Holiday, 38 minutes, he had 29 points and nine assists, seven rebounds himself. Drew Holiday is just fantastic, man. Triple, triple double, man. This is the this is the best I've ever seen Drew Holiday play. I this is I mean this is the best I've ever seen Drew Holiday play, and I'm talking about his 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 his, his All Star year. This is the year. I mean, he is is, is he looked he looked the same to me when he was in Philly. When I he think he's he, I think he's he a looked, little he, he's a lot smarter now. Right, that's what I'm saying. O- overall. Drew Holiday this is the best version of Drew Holiday I've ever seen. He's not held, he's not hurt. He's playing with confidence. He's shooting the ball. He's playing stellar defense. His defense is awesome. His offense is awesome. Often awesome. He is terrific, man. And I and and we've been hard on Drew Holiday on this show because we knew Drew Holiday was capable of playing like this. Now he has the temperament. Right. He's he's doing what needs to be done. He's playing a perfect complement yeah, player yeah, to that and also, yeah. let's talk to about Ian yeah. Clark as well. We're, gonna leave, we, we're not going to leave Ian Clark out. Ian Clark just loves playing against the Miami Heat. He lit him up before. He lit, he lights him up in this game. He had 21 points, 9 of 11. He shot 3 of 5 from downtown. He played 38 minutes. He They knew Ian Clark, when Ian Clark has the touch, you let him play. And they did let him play. He had 21 points in his game. He was dropping them shots like nothing, man, big time. And then only we only had four guys in double figures, but also – uh, 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 we looked at the other guy was, of course, Nuritich, who played 35 minutes. He only had 10 points, but he had nine rebounds. And he played a little defense there, you know, in, 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 in Morris store uh, and throughout the game. But anyway, this is the kind of play that the Pelicans was against a scrappy Miami Heat club. They played really well. They closed out the Heat for the season series, by the way. The Pelicans beat this team 109 to 94. They beat them 124 to 123. They win the series for the season, closing them out. And more importantly, they breached the gap a little bit closer to San Antonio encroaching in the Southwest. And more importantly, you look at the overall statistics, the Pelicans are still looking good right there as they continue to climb. Four game winning streak with the Pelicans. Before we go on with any more statistics and more insight, let's listen to AD and see what his thoughts are uh, after the win. Here's that. Um, we just fought. Uh, that's really it. You know, the ball didn't go our way. We had the rebound bar- bounce right and draw the game. We got the layup, but we just wanted to fight. Um, all throughout the game, we didn't really have a lead um, throughout the entire of the game. And we just, just fought, just battled, um, knowing that both teams are in the same spot right now as far as playoffs. And uh, we both trying to accomplish the same thing. And, um, 
know, we just had to come out and just play as a team and play with a lot of energy and, you know, God just fought through the end. You know, you know made shots and missed shots and um, we just buckled down defensively and, and made shots when it counted. Obviously, uh, you know, you're going to get the focus with the numbers that you put up tonight, but how important was that he get 19 in the first half and Drew do what he did down the stretch with distributing the basketball and scoring? Oh, it's huge. Um, you know, we don't win that game without Ian playing the way he played. We don't win that game without Drew playing the way he played. Um, you know, we just, everybody just has to step up, you know, to mark the absence, and that's what guys are doing. Um, playing a lot of confidence on um, the last four games now. Um, you know, I think we're playing with a lot more pace than we've been the number one team in pace over the last 10 games. Um, so we're just playing, playing differently, and we're just playing up tempo and just trying to get easy looks, and guys just playing the rhythm and playing with a lot of confidence. Um, and that's what we have to do. That's Anthony that Davis, man, and uh, AD brings us to the break. When we come back on the other side of the break, we'll talk more about uh, all of our Pelican-related issues and all the topics on the other side of the break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Uh, uh, What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. We still talking about this fantastic win of the Pelicans in overtime, knocking off the Miami Heat by the score of 124 to 123. We just played Anthony Davis, who took us into the break, breaking down how Ian Clark was instrumental in helping them win that game. Of course, he loves playing against the Miami Heat. He really sauced them the last time they played, knocked them out of the building. He loves shooting against the Heat, um, as usual. But that was a big win by the Pelicans because the Heat, on the other hand, are at the same in the same position predicament as the Pelicans are. They are eight seed currently right now in the Eastern Conference standings, sitting at thirty one and twenty nine, as they uh, with that loss, and they're two and eight the last ten out of last ten contests, and they got the Miami the Detroit Pistons on their heels, but at least they got a gap of about three games. The Pelicans, on the other hand, have the, they can win three or four more games and hope things roll the right way. They got Portland ahead of them on a the two-game winning streak. They got Denver ahead of them on a the four-game winning streak. They got the the Thunder ahead of them on a the two-game winning streak. Minnesota lose Jimmy Butler. They just lost one. And, of course, the Spurs falling through the floor right now. Loses a four in a row. So things are shaking up in the Eastern Conference from position four all the way to eight. So things can look radically different in the next five, to day, five games. And the Pelicans are playing with a lot of intensity to try to accomplish that. Would you say quickly, D.C., before we go to our topics? 
Yeah, man, you got a lot of teams out there fighting, but uh, I know we're one game away from uh, letting the Clippers overtake us, but at the same time, we're only three games away from the top spot. So um, you got a lot of teams out there pushing, and everybody not going to make it. So some teams are going to fall off. I mean, could we see the Spurs lose that top three spot? I think so. I think wow. Minnesota's going to drop down as well. So we used to seeing the San Antonio Spurs yeah. in the playoffs. It'd be weird to see them drop all the way down, man. But I don't look- think they're going to drop out of the playoffs. I just think they. I don't think they're going to finish the season in the, with that third spot. Clippers, Clippers and Utah make it all intriguing, man. Portland, Denver. Uh, Clippers, Utah, New Orleans, all in the mix. That's the teams, man. So we better watch teams, out for that. Here's Ian Clark, man. Minnesota going to take a step back, too. We're going to see. It, looking at uh, Ian Clark, we spoke to him earlier about his contribution. Anthony Davis mentioned it. Here's Ian Clark. What he had to say about you guys. Um, that we, we're, we're figuring it out, uh, definitely. I think that we needed a game like this, uh, training, you know, traveling the whole game, like you said, and being able to, to grind it out and get a win, uh, especially after the break. You know, we haven't played in a week, so – uh, being able to have a game like this, especially at home for us, is good, and hopefully we can continue off this momentum. And not only for the team, obviously, AD and Drew are big tonight, but how big is it for the team to have guys like you, uh, Mecca, contribute the way y'all did tonight to kind of get a, that overall effort from everybody? I mean, that's, that's what we're going to need, and I think that's that's what we're slowly figuring out, that we're going to need everybody. Obviously, those guys are, are going to get their shots. They're going to, you know, make an impact on the game like they always do. But having the, the second unit and having the cast, you know, the other guys stepping up and, and making plays, whether it's defensively or offensively, um, we're going to need that uh, these last 24 games. And saying that, I mean, how good was AD on my other historic stat line for him? Or what did you see from him? Man, this is just him being great. Um, you know, that's, that's what we expect from him. Um, obviously, you know, we, we know he's going to make some tough shots, but we need him to do that for if, if we want to win, especially in close games. What are your thoughts on Omeka? Just, he's been out of the league for four or five years. He's out there blocking dunks. I think he had five blocks tonight, just the performance that he's been I think that he's a, he's a, a really big X Factor for us. Um, to be able to to guard those five men, you know, with his with his size and strength, um, and also being like you said, be able to block shots, and that starts a lot of our breaks. It give ADs a chance to get out and run. Um, we have him dynamic in transition, and it's 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 better for us. Do you believe in this team ever weighing a little bit? Ian Clark says we're figuring it out. We're figuring it out, and I think so. I think it's that's a not that's not an understatement, Mr. Ian Clark. Definitely the Pelicans are figuring it out. Winners of four in a row. They got a very difficult matchup against a Milwaukee Buck Club coming up. And guess what? The Bucks are a pretty tough club in their own right. They sit sixth in the Eastern Conference standing currently with a record of 33 and 25. We'll preview that game toward the end of this segment. But now let's get into the rest of our topics, DC. Big wins just like we are against uh I think Toronto, man. Toronto is a good team. We just beat them. They're looking pretty good. They were coming in. Seven and Love three. Coming in, man. Seven and three the last ten games. They're definitely playing with a lot of confidence under that new coach. Uh, let's look into uh, some of these topics. Let's talk about the newest acquisition to the Pelicans, uh, Walter Lemon Jr. Of course, he was signed <laughs> uh, after the All-Star break, and he was a guy, if you don't know about Walter Lemon Jr., uh, he's a guy that's a high flyer. You can go on YouTube. I think we posted his highlight reel on our social media page, by the way, for all – uh, people that listen to the show, join us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, everywhere. Pretty much we own a, 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 a most major What's platforms. What's the page? Uh, Big Q and the guys at Facebook. We own Sportscom on Twitter. Uh, the Pro Media Network on YouTube. Uh, it's the same thing, Pro Media Network on Instagram. And you can also just, if you if you don't remember that, just put the Sports Coma in your Google search box and find us that way as well. Pretty simple. When you find us, just sign up. Uh, YouTube, YouTube, like us, subscribe to us, whatever, and you'll get all that fantastic content because we also have a lot of good, interesting sports news that we cover that we, the, if you sign up for our page, we have highlights every day and, and updates on the Saints, the Pelicans, and all, and, and even college sports, boxing, all the like. So sign up, make it easy on yourself. You want to follow the Saints, the Pelicans, and also catch all of our video reports that we do and all that fantastic stuff at the, the Sports Coma social media pages thank you very much cheap pl- uh cheap uh plug that dc but uh it pays the bills brother. Right. lemon fresh let's go to walter lemon junior six street uh 200 pound shooting guard point guard actually very explosive point guard they didn't they don't have nobody like this on the team it's in fall this guy's a, a mad dog attacking we, we the basket. somebody with that athleticism man uh we don't have a real slasher and uh he's a guy that kind of fits that and mold. I wonder if you can catch out of use. I see him get up pretty high. He was he came in, he had a lot of intensity, dude, and he wasn't scared. That's what I liked about him. But uh 
he took two shots and he got both of them blocked. <laughs> and his last one was whole goal, but I did admire his uh his ability to come in and not be afraid and, and attempt to take charge. And uh, he, when he adjusts to the game, I, I'll be very intrigued to see what he can be. Brad, he's out of Bradley, Bradley University, 25-year-old. Hopefully he sticks around. He got a lot of ump to him. Uh, very interesting young player. A lot of energy, man. Yeah. He'd be a real spark plug guy for us. Hope so. Hopefully he stick, sticks around, but that's Walter Lemon Jr. for those who don't know. Let's cruise into our, our Okafor, our Oak Tree talk about Okafor. Okafor, the team has been undefeated <laughs> since putting Okafor in the lineup. Team has been undefeated yeah. since having him in the lineup. Okafor has been rejuvenated, revitalized since getting to that lineup. He's uh, blocking shots at the rim. He's tapping, slapping out. One of his famous moves yeah. is to tap out the rebound uh, back out to the three point line. That's the famous thing that he that he does very well. He's been doing this. He's been he changed the game with that a little bit, man. He was doing that before DeAndre Jordan, actually. Right. So this is the thing. You know, his contribution to the Pelicans has been real good as far as the defense. Uh, quickly, what's your thoughts on Emeka Okafor, uh, his defensive style of play in comparison uh, to the rest of the team, in, in particular AD? I think he's an excellent defender, actually. He's actually a little underrated. Um, he's blocked several dunks already. We probably only had him for about four or five games. Um, he's a pest for anybody coming into the paint. He doesn't let people score easily. When he fouls them, he makes sure they don't score Um on the offensive end would be my only knock on him and the fact that he takes minutes from Sheik Diallo, who I like. But uh, Omeka Okafor is an excellent addition, and I think even once DeMarcus Cousins comes back with Meritage, we should still hang on to him and give him some minutes. You definitely have him for cheap if you choose to hang on to him. In this game against the Miami Heat, he played 18 minutes. He's been hovering right around that mark by 18, 20-minute 20, 20 mark, and uh, I guess L Gentry. Zero, minutes right there, right. Two points in the game. He had seven rebounds, five blocks for Mech Okafor in 18 minutes. So uh, very interesting there for Oak Tree. Continue to play well. They're going to continue to insert him. He'll have an opportunity to play against this uh, Milwaukee club. And he's very, a uh, very mobile guy, too. He can run the floor we, we, as well. So that's interesting to see that combination. We play Okafor excellent off the Davis. defense, man, for him, Meritage, and AD. We got blocks all over, bro. Ooh we need to do is clear up these fundamentals some type of way, man. 72 points in the paint. It's kind of hard to talk about how him being a great defender. I mean, he is, but I feel like they dropped the ball fundamentally against yeah. Miami. They, I think some of those points no probably... We should have open time. I, I think some of those points, points, seventy-two points, probably some of those points have probably been erased if he had played more minutes. I could see he only had eighteen minutes in a game. Maybe if he had like twenty-five more, twenty-five, twenty-six minute range somewhere in there, you probably see some of those points drop as uh, as as his presence is well known. Let's go. Let's talk about Drew Holiday. Let's move into the next talk about Drew Holiday playing at an All Star level. Now we and you had this debate. We talked about it. you always been a advocate for uh, Drew Holiday to the point where I thought Drew Holiday was actually uh. uh paying your bills uh but um uh no <laughs> <laughs> i know talent man i'm gonna just call it what it is if okay he was listen garbage, i say it garbage <laughs> listen at drew holiday we, we were right rightfully a uh, tough on drew holiday because this is the drew holiday that we were saying all that i was saying all the time see, that he was supposed to be calling the man the dude from get out and all that <laughs> yeah, that was you <laughs> um, let's talk about that for a second. Let's 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 kind of look at that real fast. Drew Holiday's All Star love. You think he's a little pissed about not making All Star break? Perhaps thinking maybe it's time for me to kind of you know turn it on. You forgot who I am, kind of deal. What you think about that quickly? No, I actually think Drew Holiday doesn't care about that at all. I think Drew Holiday wants to get into the playoffs. I think Drew Holiday wants to win. And I think Drew Holiday appreciates his teammates because I I believe DeMarcus Cousins and AD have sat down and talked to Drew Holiday and has been pushing him to be more of a focal point in the offense when he easily prefers to take a back seat. So I think he's really a team player and extremely humble. And I don't think he really cares about making an all-star game. I mean, of course, everybody probably would like to, but I don't think that's his motivation. Okay, very well said. L Gentry, next topic. L Gentry getting deep into the bench. I mean, so deep in the bench that he played Walter Lemon Jr. Just four minutes, but he still gave him an opportunity to play. Curious enough, he didn't play DeAndre Liggins up, uh, any minutes tonight. That's curious. But still in all, he played Walter Lemon Jr. to see what he got. Uh, L Gentry digging into the bench. What you think about that based upon his previous coaching moves? 
Uh, did he get pulled into Dell Demp's office and get a few I, points? Hey, <laughs> that's my that's my thing, man. That's what I think. <laughs> what happened? But uh, whatever reason it happened, I'm gonna still give credit to Al Gentry because he's the guy out there calling the shots, and he could easily not listen. Um, I think what his job being on the line, um, and him having pressure. Maybe he's one of those guys who plays uh, performs better under pressure because um, the more we talk about getting rid of him, it seems like the better moves he's making as a coach. And uh, I hope he keeps it up. And maybe if the foot get off his neck, he don't need this type of pressure to keep it going. So um, if we could figure out this defensive issues we got, bro. We'd be a very dangerous team, even with Demarcus Cousins um, hurt. We often talk about the reserve. Let's move to this one quickly because we often talk about the fact that we thought that they was, should add another big to kind of reinforce the bench behind Okafor, perhaps another big, another center, a veteran big. But the Pelicans, obviously, looking ahead at Solomon Hill, they call him Solo. Uh, Solomon Hill, due to return. Why is he called Solo? Because he can't carry the team by himself. I don't, I don't understand well, that's that. the first four, le- uh, four letters of his, his, his name, Solomon. So they call him Solo. Uh, I guess Han Solo uh-huh. might be a Star Wars fan. How the hell I know? But I know that. Uh, but what I do know is the fact that uh, he is coming back. He is coming back, and he's he's healthy. Good. And 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 what kind of contribution quickly do, does uh, Solo represent to the Pelicans? He solely makes a com uh, contribution solely on defense. Um, I don't know what they expect from him offensively. You know he's going to be rusty. Um, so maybe his shot improved. I'm hoping maybe so. He can work his way into the starting lineup before the end of the season. But uh, we know what he can do on defense, and I think that in itself will bring a lot to the team. And defense don't require nothing but effort. So well, I think if, he can do that coming well, in. Well, if fun. anything, he definitely can give you effort on defense. That's that's His name is his game as far as that so goes. We have a few minutes left in the show, about three or four minutes. We're going to use these – Minutes very wisely to go over the Pelican matchup against the Milwaukee Bucks. That'll be tomorrow, kind of a early game. It'll be two o'clock uh, Central Time in the in Milwaukee in Milwaukee's what is it Bradley Center up there? I guess yeah, the Bradley Center, uh, the BMO Harris Bradley Center. That's right. At two o'clock tomorrow, so very early game for the Pelicans. I feel like Joe Noah, man. What's in Milwaukee? <laughs> Well, the Pelicans did beat the Bucks earlier this year, 115 to 108. They did beat them. They'll get an opportunity to close the season out against the Bucks uh, tomorrow. As uh, a lot of people say, Milwaukee will end up winning this game. They come into it averaging 105 points a game, giving up 105 points a game, shooting 48 percent from the field, averaging 40 rebounds, uh, 39 rebounds a game, uh, 22 and a half assists per game, five blocks per game. Eight and a half assists, steals per game. They just won one against them. The uh, who did they beat? The Toronto Raptors in overtime, one twenty-two to one nineteen. And they're winners of seven out of the last ten games. Seven and three out of the last ten. Very interesting and, and good numbers for Milwaukee. Uh, then we got the Pelicans, uh, averaging one eleven point five, giving up uh, 11, one, uh, 11 point, uh, one 11 point four. 48 field uh, shooting forty eight percent from the field. 44 rebounds per game, 26 assists per game, five and a half blocks per game, eight steals per game. Winners of four in a row, five and five the last 10. Pelicans coming off wins against Brooklyn in two overtimes, beating Detroit, the Lakers, and then an overtime win over Miami. Four very strong wow. wins for the Pelicans. Very interesting wins, too. The Pelicans good teams, look to man. All good teams except Brooklyn. Right. Uh, Brooklyn gave them all they can want. Very exciting matchup there. But looking at uh, by the way, Solomon Hill's date uh, is uh, they anticipating he might get some play uh, coming up real soon. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, Going against Milwaukee Bucks soon? Well, I, I'm not certain. I've heard some some reports say uh, maybe the next two games or so, but he's really close to, to returning. So perhaps we'll have to monitor that. But the Milwaukee Bucks, like we said, they're sitting right now in the central standings, very tough teams in the division, in the, in the, in the division they play. I mean, they have they, they play in the same division as the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are the top dog in the central, 35 and 23. Then they got the Pacers, who are playing really well. Indiana, led by Oladipo, 
playing really well. They've won four in a row. They're 34 and 25. Indiana, a very surprising team to be there. Milwaukee is playing better. They're 33 and 25 and sit in the center part of the central, followed by Detroit, who's 28 and 30, and Chicago, who is 20 and 38. Looking at the Southwest Division as well, the Houston Rockets are the top dogs, winners of 11 in a row followed by the San Antonio Spurs, who are 35 and 25, loses a four in a row. That's good for us. New Orleans is 32 and 26, 13 games back of Houston. They're only two games back of the San Antonio Spurs. Don't sound like a lot, but if they can catch the Spurs, that means a four, a four position step up from eight to right inside the top five. So that's very, those are very important games. And you got Memphis at 18 and 40, loses of nine in a row in Dallas, bottoming out right now, 18 and 41, loses of three in a row. So there it stands, uh, they D.C. Coach they, they GM said they tanking, so we, we know. I don't even know if you're supposed to even, <laughs> I don't even know if that's legal to even say that you can say that we tank. Well, they find them $600,000 for saying it, so obviously yeah, it's but, not legal. But you know what? But that's crazy, though. Why would you ever admit to such a thing? You've even used the term tanking. You know, that was like sacrilegious a few years ago Drug, to even much consider saying that. <laughs> well, drugs and alcohol. Well, and that's Mark Cuban, you know what I'm saying? Right he might, Mark Cuban might be smoking some of them Cuban <laughs> cigars laced with that special greenery. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's preview this game, D.C. Based on everything that you know about how uh, dangerous the Milwaukee Bucks and how hungry the Pelicans are, what is your prediction in this game? Man, this is a tough game. It bro. is. I can't. I can't go against my uh, my Pelicans right now, man. They, they're showing a lot of resolve and resilience, which are staples of our city. So I think it's all kind of meshing together and they kind of gelling, man. So I'm gonna say they beat Milwaukee, but this is gonna be a tough one, man. Probably just as tough as this Houston game. Hopefully we don't go to another overtime because we short handed and we don't need that. No, we don't, brother. And you're absolutely right, Giannis. Uh, Antikonopo, uh, the Greek freak, averaging about 28 points a game. Chris Middleton averaging 20 points a game. Eric Bledsoe averaging 17 points a game. Malcolm Brogdon, 13 points a game. And they did get Jabari Parker back. He's averaging 9 points a game through 18 minutes That's under a minute cool. restriction. So you got to watch out. Then John Hansen, the big center that plays there, averaging 9 points a game. Snell off the bench with 7. And Teletovich averaging 7 points a game. So a lot of scoring going on they issues on defense though Real issues deal, on man. defense full team. right they got issues on defense Yo, my man, call is i'm agree i think the new orleans pelicans can pull out this win i just see something different in them i think the new uh hopefully they can be able to pull off a difficult win in milwaukee because this would mean a lot as they get closer and closer to that san antonio spurs team so anyway that's the end of the show we'd like to thank y'all for joining us today on the pelican post game report as I said previously and always, join our social media pages at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Timber, Pinterest, YouTube especially, all of the above and everything. Donate at Patreon. Go to www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. And from me in D.C., peace. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, or in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily, here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell die bricks cubes and pyramids check out the posh lifestyle.com that's life spelled with a y p-o-s-h-l-y-f-e-s-t-y-l-e.com for all your health needs so get your mind and body right with a posh lifestyle clear clean great tasting filtered water we're all thirsty for it but in the u.s alone An estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, 
Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book, providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide, offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today.